the Baltimore Ravens are moving on, and I think that you should too. Uh, the way that this morning, it started off for me. Uh, my daughter, she woke up. I was holding her, talking to her, carrying her and stuff, and she decided, you know what? I'm going to throw up on daddy's shirt. I said, okay, wow. Okay. So I had to change my shirt. This is not the shirt she threw up on. Um, and then while I was changing her diaper, like a couple minutes later, after getting thrown up on, she decided, you know what? I'm going to give him a special surprise while he's changing my diaper during the process. So she decided to have a little mini explosion while I'm changing her diaper. So I said, you know what? I ain't going to hold it against you. I'm going to be like the Baltimore Ravens and I'm going to move on as well. But they're doing a different kind of moving on. They are trying to get past last year against the Kansas City Chiefs. Of course, that was the AFC Championship game. And that's the game that has just been hanging over a lot of their heads and a lot of the media's heads as well. But the Ravens as players... They, they move on a lot quicker than we do as fans, than people do in the media. They, they, they move past all of that stuff. But they were being asked a lot of those questions yesterday, especially with the game coming up. And I get it. They were being asked a lot of questions on, hey, it's Kansas City Chiefs game. It's a rematch. And like with Lamar Jackson specifically. They asked him how he feels about it, how he feels about the rematch. And he said that the, uh, rematch, he does rematches with teams all the time, whether they beat the Ravens or whether the Ravens beat them. And that's usually what happens most of the time. But he says he look at it just like another game. And that's something that Lamar Jackson has been saying really for any game for the longest. He said it's just another game. Um, he, he gets it, but he knows that it's just another. It's week one of the regular season. Now, I'm going to tell you all, and you all already know this anyway. But even though it's just week one, and I've been telling people like, look, it's just week one. If the Ravens win, which they will, then it's just week one. If the Ravens lose, which they won't, it's still just week one. But I do get it because if the Ravens win, then people will say, oh, they should have done that last year. Oh, I don't care if they won. Let's see what they do in the playoffs. And I get that. And I respect it, too, because... That's what it is. Like regular season, Ravens gonna be all right, but we want to see postseason. We we want to see them be the, their dominant selves in the playoffs. If the Ravens lose, then people are gonna be like, oh, so they'll never be able to beat the Kansas City Chiefs. And even and Chiefs, they they got us. They got us. Like people have called it a rivalry. <laughs> it ain't no rivalry, my friends. It's really not. It's been one-sided with Ravens and Chiefs. It really has. There have been some games where we've been closer than others, but this thing has been one-sided. They, the Chiefs, they got the Ravens number. They really do. And it's, t it's been time for the Ravens to start adjusting that. So we'll see exactly what happens uh, this coming Thursday, even though I already know the Baltimore Ravens are going to win. But they didn't just ask Lamar Jackson about it. But when they were asking Lamar Jackson about it, they were trying to bait him uh, with some of the questions that they were asking. They were looking for, like, sort of that headline from Lamar Jackson. What Can we get him riled up about these Kansas City Chiefs? Can we get him to say the right or the wrong thing about the Kansas City Chiefs? But he ain't fall for it. Now, um, somebody else who was involved in that game from last year was Roquan Smith. And Roquan Smith talked about how what better place to put on a show than when the entire world is watching. Now, Roquan Smith, I agree. I agree for sure. Um, I do remember last year after the game, or before the game, Roquan Smith was talking his trash like he does with every opponent. Like, it was not just a Kansas City Chiefs thing. But he was talking his trash before the game, ahead of the game, leading up to the game, giving you those one-liners like Roquan Smith does. And then after the game, where the Ravens, of course, lost, he was on the podium in the presser, and Donovan Smith from the Kansas City Chiefs, he was live streaming. And, boy, he was running his mouth about Roquan Smith. He was letting them have it. But it's like we couldn't even get mad because Roquan talked his trash. The ball, well, the defense backed it up, but the Baltimore Ravens as a whole, the offense, they ain't held back it up, and the Ravens end up losing. So Donovan Smith was talking his trash about Roquan Smith, and it's like, hey, you got to accept it because Ravens lost. They lost. But um, they do. It would be nice for them to put on a show. Now, somebody who can help them put on a show against the Kansas City Chiefs in a couple of days is Derrick Henry. But Derrick Henry talked about how he wished he would have been there for that game. He wished he would have been a part of the Baltimore Ravens for that game. But he said it is what it is. He's moving on that he's here now. He's here now. And coincidentally, I think they said that Derrick Henry, he averages his highest uh, yards per rush against the Kansas. It's either his highest or his second highest of his career against the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, so I said, well, OK, hey, it's not playoffs. So we ain't got to worry about the Ravens forgetting about the run against the Kansas City Chiefs. We ain't got to worry about that in, in the game in a couple of days. But still, like you got Derrick Henry, you're paying Derrick Henry a decent amount. You ain't paying him nothing crazy now. But you invested in Derrick Henry, use him. Don't be afraid to use him. Don't forget about him. 
please let's let, let, let's get it done because this game um again while it is just week one this game can really set the tone for the baltimore ravens for the rest of the season if they get a win if excuse me not if they win they get a win because they, they're gonna take care of business for sure but this game can really set the tone for the rest of the season because it could be like all right we beat the especially if they beat them decisively Ooh, but anyway if they get the win this can really set the tone for them in a good way for the rest of the season because it could be like we could beat these chiefs we got these chiefs but again playoffs is a different atmosphere but still ravens get the job done last year was last year i know us as fans we ain't moved on yet and we will not truly move on until the Ravens get the job done, really. Until they finish. Um, because, like, that's something that we always look back at. It. We, look at back, we look back at these teams. Like, I feel like we moved on from the 2020 year uh, when they went to the playoffs. I feel like we moved on from that. But 2019, you look back. There's, there's certain years where you look back and like, oh, they should have done it. They should have got it done. 2019 and 2023, for sure. Like, 2021, 2022, the, the Tyler Huntley playoff game, we've been moved off of that. Because we're like, okay, it ain't Lamar Jackson, Tyler. Oh, yeah, we've been moved off of that. And 2020, we moved off of that too. But 2019 and 2023, yeah, we, we, we think about those all the time. But the Baltimore Ravens, unlike us, they moved on. Now, something that we could never move on from is y'all. Um, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all so much the way that y'all support the channel. So thank you for doing everything that y'all do on a consistent basis. Uh, one of the ways that I try to show my support for y'all um, is by featuring your questions in the video as best we can. I know it can be hard sometimes. Sometimes y'all can be waiting forever, but I appreciate y'all being patient with me as we get through your questions and get to your questions. Now, um, this next question came from my guy, Keontae. And he said, uh, yo, Engraven, I want to start this off by giving you your flowers. Man, I started watching a couple of years ago. And man, I can honestly say living in Dallas, you keep me up to date uh, with my Baltimore Ravens. And you do it consistently through having your kids. I uh, hope them and the wife are doing good, by the way. I appreciate that, man. Uh, so I just want to say I appreciate you for the dope content and consistency. Thank you, man. Thank you. For real, man. I appreciate this. This is, um, that's special, man. I appreciate that a lot, man. Uh, he also said, my question, though, is do you think TJ Tampa will get a good amount of playing time? I really think we hit on both corners. I don't think he'll get a good amount of playing time early because he's just behind so much. He's, be he's behind a lot of experience. Marlon Humphrey, Brandon uh, Stevens, Nate Wiggins, first round pick. And then you got Jalen Alma Davis, who he was coming on strong. And he got a lot of experience over TJ Tampa in, th in this offseason alone. But he's been in the league for a couple of years, so... And then when Arthur Millette does finally come back, you still got Ardarius Washington, too, who's, who's here right now. So, no, I, I don't think. And then Kyle Hamilton, they have him in, slot, in the slot a lot. They got him moving around and whatnot. So I, I don't think T.J. Temple will get a lot of experience, at least on defense early on. Maybe on special teams, though. But on defense, no. And that's not a bad thing. It's just because of everybody who's in front of him. Hear me out. Next question came from my guy, Ricky Williams. Was it the Ricky Williams who played for the Baltimore Ravens that year? Maybe. He says, so hear me out. 49ers just signed Brandon Ayuk to an extension. They are projected to be over $30 million over the cap next season. This is where Trent Williams comes in. Ooh, I think I know where you're going, but let's, let's just keep going. He said, <laughs> he said, his cap number shoots from $10 million to $30 million and doesn't have any more guaranteed money for the remainder of his contract. What do you think it would take to pull off a trade for him? Literally everything. Everything. Um, I don't think he's going anywhere. I think the 49ers are going to get it worked out with him. I don't think he's going anywhere at all. Um, but you all, that, it does make for an interesting situation because, again, there's been threats of him holding out. And Trent Williams is somebody that's going to do it. He ain't just going to talk about holding out. He's going to actually hold out to let you know the impact that's felt when you ain't got no Trent Williams. So 49ers, they, they, they better tread lightly. Um, but I think they'll – I, I will say I think they'll get it done. But at the same time, if he ain't got no guarantee, no, they're going to get it done. They're going to get it done. It's Trent Williams, man. But then they're going to figure out everything else next season. I think they're going to trade Debo next season. They're going to get rid of him. But oh, they could do this season. But I think he's going next season. I don't think they're going to keep both Brandon Ayuk and Debo. Um, Debo going to be going. Anyway, he said uh, he could potentially be a trade uh, be a trade deadline acquisition for a team in need. Hopefully, Ravens ain't in need. But I get it. He would make them a lot better immediately from jump. But what would you, kick Ronnie to the right? Or would you just put Trent with, like, 
I think he's going to want to be left because he want to be paid like a left tackle. Left tackle makes some bread. Uh, he said, this is all hypothetical, but where could Stanley? OK, he already said it. He said, where could Stanley play if hypothetically we pull off this trade? Mind you, this is all me just being bored waiting for the Orioles game to start. <laughs> Shout out to the Orioles. I hope well, you sent this on September 1st. I don't know if they won or lost. Um, I think I want to say that they lost because I think I saw my guy, Kevin. No, that's what that was yesterday. So I don't know. I was on YouTube yesterday. Anyway. Um. Yeah, if if you get a if you get a Trent Williams, you gotta kick Ronnie to the right because this is Ronnie's last year. And you could pitch it to Ronnie like this, like, look, Ronnie Stanley, this is your last year with us. We already know you can play left tackle, but show the world that you can also play right tackle. Show the world your versatility while we get Trent Trent Williams in here, just to make our team that much better. Ronnie, this this could be big for you. This could be big for your money for the future. Hey, we might even think about keeping you if we get Trent Williams now. Again, um, you know, it's hypothetical. It's, it's, it's not going to happen. They ain't getting no Trent Williams because they had to, again, give up the world for Trent Williams. And Ravens don't want to give up the world, not even half the world for nobody. So it would be nice, though. It would be nice, but Ronnie ain't even got to worry about it. His left tackle spot is his alone.